Hello everyone, welcome back to some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer. This is going to be the Tomb Kings versus the Vampire Coast. For my army, my front line is made up of a whole bunch of Tomb Guards and Nehekar Warriors just kind of mixed in with each other. Uh, the Tomb Guards, I assume, can just kind of eat through the chaff very quickly and get to their backline if the Vampire Coast has a backline, so I'm trying them in here. Also, they have a really good uh, shield block chance for all the missile fire that they're probably going to be receiving. Nehekar Warriors, not really, but that is why I have them mixed up in here as well also i think i have a basic skeletal warrior no I, maybe not yeah but there we go one single skeletal warrior then back here we have a group of tomb guard with halberds to help deal with crabs or necrosfex necrosfex ne what are you called necrofex sorry any kind of large creature we brought one of these i didn't go heavy in the anti-large department with the infantry because i did also bring a uh, necro sphinx which does a lot of anti-large armor piercing damage and we are being led by the grand hierophant Hotep with a lot of the buffs, I believe. I took most of the buffs. And then the Vortex spell, which looks pretty cool. It's like a tornado of, uh, like, dust skulls or sand skulls. And then we also have one group of Ushapti Great Bows to help snipe down the uh, big important targets. And, I'm sorry, also forgot to mention Tomb Scorpions. I brought two of those. One there and one there. Just because, um, I think actually what I... I'm remembering now, I brought them initially to fight against Death Guard, because I knew that the anti-infantry Death Guard could really counter our Tomb Guards pretty hard, or like our entire infantry line, so I wanted to have a couple of these bad boys to try and uh, contend with those vampires. So, for the Vampire Coast, we have two Morngulls, one here, and then the Renowned one, which is going to also have Rampage, I believe? Yes. Uh, so they are very scary, and also stalking, so I do not know them yet. The front line is made up of a couple of polearm zombies. We also have Count Noctilus on his Necrospex, as you can see right there. A second Necro Effects, which double necrofax i think is a very solid build and then their back line is going to be made up of a bunch of zombie pirate gunnery mobs which i don't think is a, a bad choice um because the gunnery mobs can do really well against a lot of the tomb guard or tomb king's infantry not as much against their more heavily armored constructs though but to you know to fight those they do have two death guard with pole arms one on each flank and of course the zombie pole arms as well and the Necrofex can shoot up any kind of constructs before they get to the front lines as well. So that is going to be the matchup. Let us proceed onward. So with them having double Necro Sphinx, like, I, I can't just stay back and snipe with one who shot the Great Bow. So I already knew that I'm going to be charging, so we're going to be just kind of lining up over here and then charging downhill. My shot to Great Bow is going to be over here on the side of the forest, because though I do not want them to shoot through the trees. We're also going to be buffing up, I don't think they have it yet. There we go. We're going to be continually buffing them up with the Petra's Incantation of Righteous Smithing, which is going to increase their missile damage and their armor piercing damage, and we're going to just start sniping um, Count Noctilus. Now this is probably the time when Count Noctilus maybe should have been shooting back at the very least, but I don't think that Noctilus nor this Necrofex will be shooting at my Ushapti Great Bows at all. Uh, but what will be happening is that these two Morgals are going to go wide around and try and uh, surprise my Ushapti Great Bows. So that's what those two Morgals are going to be doing. Meanwhile, the very slow Tomb Guards are just going to continue to be going up. Oh, there we go. Uh, the Necrofex, uh, sorry, Count Noctilus is doing his unique ability to try and do some damage to the Ushapti Great Bows. Doesn't really do too much though, so I'm not too worried. Uh, but they have already dealt a significant amount of damage to Count Noctilus. Count Noctilus is on the mount. It's kind of hard to dodge Ushapti Great Bows. Like, if you're on a flying mount, a fast mount of some kind, you probably can. But, um, it's hard when you're just on a Necrofex. But anyway, we're going to continually be shooting up Count Noctilus with Ushapti Great Bows. I'm going to now send my Necrosphinx out of the forest and into Count Noctilus. Now seeing that my infantry line has almost met theirs, I think it's okay to now rush out. Because uh, I didn't want to keep this thing out in the open, just getting shot up by two Necrospex. So you can already see right there. Actually, I think the Necrospex here is firing at the Necar Warriors. Not what I would have probably fired at, but anyway. Tomb King, or Tomb Scorpions, are going to be trying to go down the zombie gunnery lines there and there. My uh, Necar Warriors are going to be trying to get into the Death Guard. You can see the Death Guard are going to be chasing there. These Death Guard are going to be pulled off the corner and into this Tomb Scorpion there. And we're just going to try and isolate all of his infantry with our Necar Warriors and our Tomb Scorpion, or Tomb guards and skeletal warriors meanwhile these shops here are just free to continually fire on count noctilus and i am going to be chasing that count noctilus with our necro sphinx for a very very long time and just trying to micromanage our tomb scorpions up and down this gun line and trying my best to keep them away from the death guard with pole arms and trying to run interference with our other um, tomb king's infantry there meanwhile ketep is going to come run into this gunnery mob because the gunnery mob's not going to do too much damage to him so we can take these out for a little bit as long as the Death Guard don't get on them, I should be okay. Meanwhile, the one two guards with Halberds are going to pull on this Necrospex. Because it's not really moving like Noctilus is. The enemy is continually moving Noctilus around in circles to try and dodge this guy. So this one is just kind of holding still. So I'm going to throw my two guards on that one to start wheeling him down. 
And this is when the Morgals are going to show themselves, and I'm going to be like, oh crap. So this is going to be me on skirmish. That's me taking off skirmish mode, and I'm going to manually aim. And I'm going to pull back these two warriors to try and just pin these two down, because I need to save the Ushapti Great Bows, because they have just done so much damage to Noxus, but I need them to finish off Noxus. So I need them to not get caught by these Morgals. And the Morgals' ideal target is infantry. They even have an anti-infantry, so this is kind of feeding them what they want. But this is kind of cheap infantry, and I, again, I need to save the Ushapti, so I need to run interference here. Meanwhile, Kaltep is still uh, fighting some gunnery mobs, but now I need to run them away from the Death Guard that are now trying to kill them. The Tomb Scorpions are going to be pulled over here. I think I eventually, it's either this one or this one, is going to be pulled into the Morgals as well to try and keep them busy. While the Ushapti are going to post up around right here and continue to shoot at Necro of Count Noctis, which again, you can see, I am just continually trying to chase him with the Necro Sphinx. I'm trying to get just one good or two good solid hits in there. But the entire time, he is also still getting shot up by the Ushapti Great There goes a decent hit right there. Uh, Ketep is into another guy zombie pirate gunnery mob far away from the death guard again this is a fight that he can take even though he's a caster there goes one of our tomb scorpions again to just keep these two busy while we deal with the two necro specs and the rest of the units um for the most part i'm just trying to keep away from the death guard over here i'm gonna do my best not to run them into um the necro sphinx there these death guard are being i'm sorry wait, where are they a second death guard oh there they are i thought the other one was over here anyway the other uh death guard is just kind of hanging out not really fighting right now. I think the enemy is too busy with trying to um, get Count Noctilus away. We've just been running in circles, but finally, right there, Count Noctilus is finally going to fall. Uh, this is going to be the second time I cast this Vortex spell, by the way. Vortex spells are nearly useless, and this one is too. It's not really even going to do anything. It looks cool, though, but it just kind of goes off into a direction. Uh, Kotep at this point, I think I'm going to start pulling away because he's starting to take a lot of damage and I can't afford to let him die. Also, we have some halberds. There we go. The Death Guard are going to be charging, so I need to get him out of there. The Shot to Great Bows are now going to be focusing down on the other Necro Fex Colossus, which my two guards with halberds have been dealing with. And now we're going to run our Necro Sphinx in there as well. So that's going to be pretty good. A lot of damage on that. Uh, meanwhile, up here, again, the Tomb Scorpion and the Chief Infantry... Well, Tomb Guard's not Chief. But they are still just keeping these units at bay, allowing this guy to just focus down the Necro Sphinx. And then after we bring this down, you can see it's falling down. We're going to throw the Necro Sphinx into this bulge of... Um, well, poor choice of words. This, uh, a lot of large units over there. We're going to throw our Necro Sphinx into the large group of large units. And I think I'm going to start shooting them with the Shot to Great Bows as well. And there's really not much left for the infantry that we got to worry about besides Death Guard. But I'm kind of saving them for last. We're going to focus them down uh, when there's nothing else for us to get kind of caught up on. My Summon to Shop over here dealing with some more gunnery mobs. The gunnery mobs in general are, have been kind of dealt with at this point. Uh, there you can see that the Morn Gauls are going to now peel off finally from the Tomb Scorpion. They probably should have peeled off a long time ago. Uh, but they're going to try and chase Kotep, but Kotep has more speed than they do, so we're going to be able to just kind of run around. And meanwhile, they're still going to be shot by the Ushapti Great Bows. And uh, yeah, not much left in terms of powerful units for the Vampire Coast. The morale bar is starting to tick into our favor, and we are again just kind of whittling them away. We're going to throw the Necrosphinx into here. These Morgals are going to be chasing Kotep for a little bit longer, but I think they're going to eventually pull off and go after my uh, archers, which now, at this point, basically used all their ammunition, so that is totally fine. My Summon Dushapti are just uh, finishing up the gunnery mobs, and now we have to deal with two Death Guard with pole arms still, but we have a lot of big units, and that's going to be a lot for them to deal with, and again, Kotep's just running away from these Morgals. Uh, there we go. We're going to shoot them up there. The Necrosphinx is finishing up the other Morgal group right there. And uh, these guys are already almost dead, but um, now they're going to be rampaging into the fight. We still have a lot of infantry mixed in with our big creatures here, so that should be fine with the, the uh, dealing with the Death Guard. And again, the uh, morale is in our favor, the bar there. And after we deal with these Morgals, it's it's going to be pretty much uh, GG for the Vampire Coast. We just got to clean up here a little bit. So that's going to be a good game, friends. Um, I'm probably going to be bringing some more Tomb King vs. Vampire Coast replays in the future but uh good game to white owl there and i hope you enjoyed some fancy footwork from count noctilus let's call it from running around trying to dodge the necro sphinx but anyway let's go watch the cinematic view of this fight these great bows they did a lot of work I find it weird that they chose to target my infantry line with both of the Necrofex uh, Colossus units there. The infantry was not really necessarily their problem in this build. 
Because I'm pretty sure they should be able to do some good damage to at least the, the two scorpions. I think they could see the Sphinx. I'm pretty sure it can't hide in the trees. Actually, you know, let me just double check. I don't think it has hide in forest. No. So yeah, they could definitely see this. That's the reason why I was keeping it in the trees, though, is the chance of them shooting it. Hopefully, some of those shots are the trees. I wasn't trying to, you know, like, hide it. Like, oh, I'm super stealthy. I'm a 50-foot tall giant sphinx thing. These trees will hide me, I'm sure. Oh man, I thought this thing was about to scratch its butt. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing scratching your butt for? I guess it was, wait a minute. I'm sorry, hold on, press all the buttons. Hold on. I know this is the, you know, cinematic view, that's not very, but it just reached back here to load its cannon arm. So it pulls cannonballs out of its ass. It's literally pulling cannonballs out of its ass. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Uncle Necro Sphinx got a war for you! And let the chase commence for the next five years. The two Scorpions have one of the coolest attack animations, the one that burrows in the ground, that one. They, it just covers so much distance. And like these pole arms are trying to get around them and then they just like break locks. That's a really cool animation. There's cats out. There's one of my useless vortex spells. So good. Oh! And I believe one of their animations, like they pick someone up with their tail and like take them on the ground. I think. Look at that! Look at that! They just go through the entire unit. Get it! Yes! One additional slice. And then it got tied up by a summon gunnery mob. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted attacking a gunnery mob. Ooh! I still say that the Nanakar Warriors should get a bonus for infantry. The dual wielding, like a lot of dual wielders have bonuses for infantry. They should get that. I don't think it will break the two games. When you're gonna fall. Fall Nautilus! Damn it! Yes! There he goes! One down. And another one bites the dust. Like a five. 
Like, give him a five bonus for his infantry. Nothing crazy. Make the Nehekara Kara Warriors worth something. For right now, in this in this army, they I brought them because I feel like they're terrible, and I just wanted to give them some love. Because like they they don't really seem good enough, like better than just basic skeleton warriors to really warrant bringing them over. They don't have shields, so like they have no missile block chance like the Stealth Warriors do. I guess they have decent melee attack, but I, I just need something for these guys. There's actually a like a Zoom King inside these things. God, that's, that tail slam. All right, friends, that's gonna do it. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time.